So I don't know if you guys were aware of this, but up until 2020, we had some bad news when it came to Alpina and the good old US of A. You see, we only had one car. Where in Europe, they had eight cars. Now that changed in 2021, kinda sorta, because we got a second car, but really that was a baby buggy, a good one, but it still was a baby buggy, so it doesn't count. Now, fast forward to 2022, at least the model year, and we get a third Alpina. And this one is by far more attractive than the other two put together. Now I'm willing to bet if you are familiar with the Alpina world, specifically the B7 we have already driven, you will be familiar with this, the 4.4 twin turbocharged V8. In fact, that sounds very similar to the 4.4 twin turbo V8 we've driven in the M8 version of this car. So what is going on? Well, Alpina, they bring their own ECU tuning to this vehicle, which changes the output. It goes to 612 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque. And that's the more interesting number because remember the M5 CS we've driven on the track, that one's a measly 553 pounds of torque. So this is a very nice bump to the same engine. But really what's going on here is how you manage engine temperature, how you get air and coolant in and out of this engine. They do that in a couple of ways. Number one, an Alpina specific intercooler. Number two, not one, but three separate exterior coolant reservoirs. Then they have a separate engine oil cooler. Then they take the transmission oil cooler from the M8, they throw it out, and they make a bigger one and attach it to effectively the same transmission. Now that's all fine and good, but then there's how it sounds. That changes a bit because there is a specific Alpina exhaust. Now putting all of that together, how does it impact fuel economy? I know you're laughing about that. And performance figures. Well, let's start with the fuel economy, which this car is not about. Uh, 17, 24, 19. Then we press on to what this car is about, which is the performance figures. They're zero to 60, 3.3 seconds for a car this size. And then there's the VMAX. There's actually two numbers there. If this were fitted with all season tires, I don't know why you'd buy this car and use it in the snow, but I guess you could. 168 miles an hour. If it's fitted with these summer only tires like this one, 201 miles an hour. Once again, back in Thermal, California, but this time with something incredibly special, which also may mean incredibly heavy. 4,831 pounds, or depending on how you express your weights and measures, 2,191 kilograms. Put another way, that's about 700 pounds heavier than the M5 CS we had on this same track. With that, Sport Plus. Oh yes, oh yes, oh, oh my God, about 3,000 RP. Holy crap, Andreas is the man. That's a buck 20, that's a buck 30. Okay, break, 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 holy crap. I love LPs because of the way they look, but Jesus Christ, or should I say Santa Maria Madre de Dios, <laughs> that was wonderful. And in reality, how many people are going to take this car to track? Probably zero. I am likely the only moron that has pushed BMW to put this thing on a track, and I promised I'd bring it back in one piece, so we're not going to be crazy. But believe it or not, it works. There's two personalities with the Alpina Tune, because remember, this is more of an executive car. So you can drive it between, say, 1,500 and 3,000 RPM, and it drives like any luxury car with a lot of presence, a lot of swagger. But the minute you get above 3,000 RPM, this thing is a monster. Now, one thing you do notice, there's a difference in the tune of the transmission and really the way it delivers power. Uh, you and I have spent a lot of time talking about this eight-speed ZF that BMW puts in practically everything, and they're kind of magicians with this transmission because it's in a lot of other cars. In Jaguars, it's not tuned very well. Here, it's tuned differently. I would argue this is the only thing I do not like about the Alpina is the tune of this transmission. It's, it doesn't shift as fast, doesn't shift as crisp. Now, granted, it's not a dual clutch, but for some reason, they have been able in the M5 CS to make that transmission, it shifts very confidently and very fast. Now, driving dynamics. Here, it's an Alpina. 
which means it's different. They've done a couple of things here. First and foremost, it's I-Box springs all the way around that are tuned specifically by Alpina. So it's not just that they change the springs, they change the entire ride control system. It does feel a bit softer than the M8 Grand Coupe that I drove out here to get here from Redondo Beach. And in reality, there's a couple of other things going on here. They put on different sway bars. They're thicker sway bars, front and rear. And then there is a rear wheel steering system in the car. Not new to BMWs, but they've tuned it differently. Now, a bit of a recap there. It's 2.3 degrees of steer, I should say, up to 2.3. Whoa, ho, ho. Now that's not earth shattering when you consider what Mercedes has done in the S-Class and the EQS, where it's between 4.5 degrees and up to 10 degrees of steer. This is more about high speed stability. I'd say it works when you're talking, say around town or even on Canyon roads, but on a track, you definitely feel the length of this vehicle. You feel how big this car is and big it is indeed. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game on the options game with today's contestant, one of our favorite flavors of BMW, which would be an Alpina. And this one is probably the most elegant looking Alpina on offer today. The 2022 BMW Alpina B8 Grand Coupe for a base price of $139,990. Now as a basis of comparison, the last time you and I drove a Grand Coupe, it was the six cylinder, so it was a bottom basement model if there's such a thing. It did have a lot of options. That one was around 100,000 US. Then there's the color that's fitted to this car and it is the stunning Alpina blue metallic only on offer in Alpinas. There's also that Alpina green. Now, if you've noticed in this episode, the car we're driving on the track is the green. The one they sent to the hangar is the blue. I'm having a hard time deciding. My thinking is if this had a saddle leather interior, I'd want the blue. But I think on this one where it has different proportions than the B7, the green may be the better choice here and the blue is the better choice on the B7. Either way, the interior is an extra cost option in this one, specifically the color, the ivory with the blue two-tone, that's full merino leather. That is an additional $2,000. Now, before we get into other options, what makes an Alpina an Alpina besides the engine tuning and all that engine cooling? Well, there's the body kit. That's the most obvious, specifically the air dam in the front. That's what stands out. And then there are the wheels, which are handmade by Alpina in-house. These are the 21s, but there is a 20 inch, looks the same, but it's a smaller wheel with all season tires on offer. I don't know if I'd want that living in California. Then there's the interior. It changes some of the tactile feel, specifically the trim on the dash. And then most importantly, it's that steering wheel that has the tap shift, but the leather is different and they have the stitching that matches the Alpina colors, the green and the blue. It is magnificent. And then last but not least, they change the graphics in the BMW instrument panel. Then we have to add some options. And the first thing would be the driver's assistance package, but this is odd because it's only a hundred bucks. This is usually like 1,500 or 2,000 in other BMWs. My thinking is the blind spot and that kind of stuff, that's standard on Alpina, but they're charging you the hundred bucks for the drive recorder. That's just my two cents. And then there is the driver's assistance package pro. This we've seen on many other BMWs. This is level two autonomy, the traffic jam assist. No, this is not a self-driving car, $1,700. Then we have to have the Bowers and Wilkins stereo. It is very good. Not as good as the Burmester and the Mercedes and the Porsche, but it's also not as expensive. Those are like five grand. This is $3,400. Then the only other thing we add is the destination handling von Dingelfing Deutschland for $995, which I'd like to point out is a lot cheaper than the destination handling we've seen on like Kias and Hyundais as of late, uh, which brings us to the total retail price of $148,095. Now, as we hit this apex, we need to kind of bring all this together. Is this a track car? Even at a place like this, Thermal California, where people that have homes here can afford to put a hundred and fifty plus thousand dollar car on a track? No. If that's the mission, it's definitely an M5 CS. This, at least in terms of driving dynamics, not the way it delivers power, in terms of driving dynamics, this is more about swagger, presence, and personality. There is a personality to this 
that is not present in other large German sedans. And that is what Alpina has kind of weaved into this thing. I would argue one of the problems of this car on a track at least, the wheels. They're stunning to look at. These are the 21s. When you put wagon wheel size tires like that on a very long vehicle that weighs almost 5,000 pounds, it will impact how much you can push this thing around a track. That's why you'd probably look at changing the wheels, maybe the 20s with the right tires on a track if that's the mission. And you know what? I think I'm talking crazy here. That is not the mission for this vehicle. It just feels different. It doesn't feel like the steering that we experienced on the M5 CS. And let's be honest, this thing is based on the 5 platform. I'd say this is, this is not a good or a bad thing. It's just different. It's a different personality. And that's really the mission of the vehicle. I would really need to find some stuff that would piss me off about this car. And that's incredibly hard to do because they're just so special. That's why they don't make many of them. Special equals I can accept some flaws. If you've dated an attractive woman, you can understand what I'm talking about. It's always challenging for me to make heads or tails of what we learn in our outings with Alpinas because if I'm honest, these, they just speak to me. And no, it's not just because of what they are dynamically, it's the fact that they layer elegance on top of those dynamics. And frankly, I don't care if it's a B8 or a B7. Granted, this one is far more attractive because at the end of the day, these, they're tuner cars. That's really what they are. It's a tuner car that one buys at a factory store and gets a factory warranty. This one is just so much more elegant to look at. And really beyond it being a tuner car, it's the fact that what, they're gonna bring a handful of these things into this country, probably 500 at most in all of 2022, which makes it a rare thing. And that brings us to the wish list. The only thing I am going to add here on the wish list is Alpina overall in North America. Three cars, really? There's eight in Europe. How about we make a deal? I don't even need all eight because I don't necessarily need the diesel and don't need the SUVs. What I need is maybe a B3. And at that, how about a wagon? Because I don't know if you've heard, Audi, Mercedes, Porsche, they can't build enough of these like 100 to $150,000 station wagons for this market, which tells me you're leaving money on the table. Just saying, this is the point of the episode where I turn this around to you guys. To opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, this is where I humbly request your help with the algorithm. But more importantly, if you are not getting notifications of new episodes, unsubscribe, resubscribe, and of course, follow us on all our socials Moto Man TV on One Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until I see you in the next episode, bish beta.